Hey guys, today I wanna to show you how to make an object have a reflection in Apple Motion. This is a pretty classic look and it never really goes out of style. It works great for logos, it works great for text, and it works great for like product shots as well. That's what we're gonna be working on today. Let me show you how it's done. Okay, here we are in a brand new Apple Motion project. The first thing we're going to do is head on over to Generators, Color Solid, and I'm going to drop a Color Solid into my project pane so it is perfectly centered. I'm going to actually head on over to Inspector and make this white. And then I'm going to right click in my project pane to duplicate that color solid. I'm gonna make this version a little bit gray, maybe a little darker, just so we can see the difference between the white and the gray so we can keep track of what we're doing. So on this selected gray color solid, let's head on over to properties. And I wanna play with the rotation of this. I'm gonna drop down my rotation arrow and on the X value, I'm going to change this to 90. Now it looks like that gray color solid has disappeared, but it hasn't. It is uh, rotated, so we're seeing the very edge of it. And you can see with my overlays here, the gray color solid is still there. The next thing we wanna do is head on up to add object and add camera. And yes, we do wanna to switch to 3D. Now let's take our gray color solid and our project pane, we're gonna head on over to properties and I'm going to bring it down on the Y position. And now we can actually kind of see our color solid. And the next thing I'm going to do is a little bit more advanced for you here. Let's switch from the active camera. We can see that here in the top left when we have a camera in our project and our project is 3D. Hit this drop down, and let's go to the right perspective. And so what this is showing us is here's kind of spatially where all of our items are. Here's the camera over here. This line here represents our white color solid. And this one here that's highlighted with the little blue dots as handles is our gray color solid. And I wanna modify the properties on the Z position. So I'm gonna drop down this arrow to reveal our Z position. And I'm going to bring it forward so we can actually see that the entire gray surface is now in front of the white. Now let's go back to the active camera at the top of our canvas, hit active camera. And now you can see we have our white vertical surface and our gray horizontal surface. I'm going to scale up that gray so that it fills the frame all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to raise this up a little bit so it's a little more centered in our screen and there we go we've got the basics of our 3d project here now what i'm going to be adding into my project is an image of an iphone with some video playing in it so i have those as two separate components i'm going to bring those in right now so what i've got is the iphone frame cropped out so it's just hollow and i've got my video clip as well. I'm gonna drop it in my project pane under the iPhone. So we need to obviously make a lot of adjustments here. I am going to first turn off that video clip. Let's get our iPhone frame situated. The first thing I wanna do is rotate it on the Z axis. So it is at 90 degrees. And I'm gonna reposition it up a little higher here. And that looks good to me. Now let's turn on our video clip and we are going to shrink it down to fit within that phone. And then of course the phone uh, has some curved corners and our video has square corners. So I'm going to add a mask to our video, head back on over to properties for mask and let's dial up the roundness. Guys, while I'm masking out this video clip, I just wanna remind you that this is my new Final Cut and Apple Motion dedicated YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button. 
Now what I would like to do is make sure that my phone frame and my video are always one unit. So I'm going to select them both in my project pane by clicking each of them while I hold down the command key, right click and hit group. So now they are all one item. And the next thing I'm going to do is create the reflection. So I'm going to select that group I just made. I'm going to duplicate it. And then we're gonna add some filters to this group. So head on over to filters, top of your screen in the center. First, let's go to blur and let's select the Gaussian blur. So it's out of focus. I'm gonna dial up in my filters pane in my inspector window, that blur, get it nice and blurry. The next thing I'm going to do is head back on over to filters. And this time we are going to go to distortion and flop. So it's reversed our group. We're gonna switch the flop from horizontal to vertical. And now you can see, start to see what we're getting here. We're getting a mirror image of our phone. And so now what I wanna do is bring that down on the Y axis into our gray area. Now, what you'll notice is because we've inverted the image, I actually need to raise the Y value to make it go down. We can definitely see that we're getting close to our effect, but there's a few adjustments that still need to be made here. First of all, you can see our reflection is just as vibrant as our original image. I definitely wanna change that. I also kind of want the reflection to sort of fall off toward the bottom of the frame. So it's a little more defined here in the center of the frame, but then toward the bottom, it's sort of going to fade away. Now I would normally do that kind of effect with a mask, but look what happens here, you guys. If you are selected on your group, so this is our reflection group, I can't enable the mask tool. I cannot do it. So we have to do some workarounds here. I'm going to be selected on that reflection group. I'm gonna right click and hit group again. And I'm going to flatten that image and hit layer order um, over here in our inspector window. And now look, I can use the mask tool. But using this mask tool at this point does get a little tricky because we have inverted our image, right? So it's flipped vertically and everything's kind of backwards from here on out working with our reflection. So just bear with me here, I'm gonna to try to go slow. So the first thing I wanna do is draw my rectangle mask where I imagine I would want it. And I'm going to hit invert mask at this point and look what happens. Somehow our reflection has ended up way up here. Okay, so this is what I meant when I said things were gonna get a little crazy. First, let's make sure we're selected on the group now and let's reposition so it's back down here and look what's happening. It's disappearing under our gray. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna turn off our gray solid so we can see what we're doing. But now we wanna work with that mask. What happened to the mask? So I'm gonna select the mask in my timeline and then we're gonna hit Apple minus to zoom way out. Our mask is all the way down here. So let's bring the mask back up where we want it. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see again. And now let's hit the mask tab in our inspector window and let's feather that mask and raise the fall off. And you can actually feather above the 100 mark if you hold down your mouse key and slide up as you grab that feather value. And then let's reposition the mask. So it's like this. So personally, I do like that, but then what about our gray color solid? There's a reason we made it a darker gray. I'm gonna turn that back on and then let's select it in our project pane, head on over to properties and let's play with the opacity. We're gonna dial down that opacity. And there we go, it looks like a mirror, doesn't it? There's your reflection effect. 
What I like to do is add a little motion to these types of projects. So I'm gonna head back on up to camera and let's make a keyframe on the scale value and let's bring that scale value down. And then let's run our playhead a little bit further down the timeline and let's make another keyframe on the camera and bring that value up so it sort of zooms out a little bit. Let's jump back to the original scale keyframe in our inspector window by hitting this little back arrow. And then let's also add a keyframe on the Y rotation. And then let's jump forward to the next keyframe we made on the scale so we can align our new keyframe here. Make another keyframe on the Y rotation. Let's go this way. get a very realistic looking reflection effect in Apple Motion. Like I said earlier, this works great with logos. It works great with text effects. And of course, with product shots, definitely adds a little wow factor, a little something extra to your projects. If you liked this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button. You guys, I'll see you again.